Happy Easter and welcome to Lafayette Presbyterian Church on Resurrection Sunday, April 4th, 2021. What a glorious morning to celebrate that Christ is risen. Now, whenever I say Christ is risen, then you say he is risen indeed. Now, let's see if I can hear any of you over the road noise and the birds and the fountain. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's try it one more time. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And now, ordinarily, we start with honks and waves. But, out of respect for the Tallahassee Noise Ordinances, we will use our horns to say hallelujah at the end of the worship service, not the beginning. But, may we have some light flashes to celebrate Christ is risen. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, that is such a beautiful sight. Amen. Now, just as on an ordinary Sunday, and there are no ordinary Sundays, but just as is our usual practice, you can text me if you have a joy or a concern, and my number is in the insert. Also, join us at 11 o'clock for glad traditional worship and beautiful, beautiful anthems. Oh, what a day to celebrate. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And now I would like to extend the right hand of Christian fellowship to my wife Susie and the hug of peace and turn the service over to her. And we'll start with a great big Easter virtual hug. <laughs> Join us now as we call one another to worship. Shout joyful praises to God, all of the earth. Sing out the glory of his name. Witness to the world the good news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us now celebrate with our glad Easter anthem, Christ the Lord is risen today. We have a few little glitches here, one moment. But we will still sing gloriously. Yeah, the birds are singing wonderfully. I don't know if you can hear them in your cars. They have really been inspired by Easter Sunday. And by the way, the sound system went down on Friday. We had a power surge here at the church, and our sound system controls are all virtual. There's not a machine that controls the microphones. It's all on a computer pad. So yesterday things were looking rather grim, but the Lord was faithful and we are now here and able to celebrate the birth, <laughs> not the birth, <laughs> well we celebrate that Christ was born, but we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Christ the Lord is risen today, ah, hallelujah. Sons of men and angels say, ah, hallelujah. Raise your joys and
please join me in our Easter litany. The risen Christ meets us at the tomb and turns our tears to joy. For your love and goodness, we give you thanks, O God. Christ comes to turn our fear to courage. For your love and goodness, we give you thanks, O God. Christ comes to turn our failures to new vision. For your love and goodness, we give you thanks, O God. Christ comes to turn our despair to hope. For your love and goodness, we give you thanks, O God. Our tears are turned to joy. Alleluia. Amen. For our joys and concerns this morning, please pray for Parker and Leah McElveen, the son and daughter-in-law of Richard, who have been diagnosed with COVID. And Linda Blunt's granddaughter, Caitlin, had oral surgery and needs our prayers. Pray for the family of Brittany Phillips, who passed away in an automobile accident, and she has three children and continue to pray for Leonard and Twyla Phillips. The only prayer response I have on text is that Richard McElveen wants us to know we just mentioned praying for his son Parker and wife, but they are recovering well, so that's a great joy. Thank you for that update, Richard. Let us come before God in prayer. Oh Lord, on this beautiful Easter morning, how can our hearts do anything less than sing with the birds a joyous song to know that not only has our Savior risen, but with Him we have been lifted up. We've been lifted up from death to life, from grief to joy, from sorrow to expectation. We have been lifted up from the ordinary to the eternal from the mundane to the marvelous. Oh yes, Lord, we thank you so much that despite the trials and tribulations of this world, despite the dark turn at the end of Holy Week, now a new beginning has been trumpeted for all humankind for all the universe, for all eternity, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us offer together the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Joyously let us bring forth God's tithes and our offerings on this beautiful Easter morning.
Easter scripture lesson comes from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices, so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Before I offer the Easter message, I can't resist. I know we've been very careful, and if you are nervous about this, you don't need to participate. But I would love to see those who are able and willing to just for a moment step outside your car and let's turn and wave to one another and celebrate the fact that we're all family in Jesus Christ. Now, be careful, don't open two doors right next to each other too fast. But let's let's see all those who are able and all those who are willing. Let's get out for a moment and let's celebrate each other and that we're a family in Jesus Christ. Look at those beautiful faces. I hope you haven't forgotten any of them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Oh, that was beautiful. That was wonderful. I have to admit, it was Richard McElveen that gave me that idea. (laughs) Today we celebrate three of the most beautiful words we know, three precious words, three words that have changed history, three words that have changed lives and changed our lives. Those three words, He is risen. He is risen. Not He was risen, although He was. Not that He will be risen, He will come back, yes, but not that he might be risen or could be risen. He might have been risen, he could have risen, and he did. But for us today, the three most beautiful words are, he is risen. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a truth that is always new, always now, Sharing these three words, the good news, oh, it never gets old. It never gets old, does it? Jesus promised that he would rise. In John chapter 2, verse 19, he said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The angels proclaimed he is risen. In Matthew 28, verse 6, they said, He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Then the 
the angels encourage them to tell the good news. Shout out, witness the good news. He is risen. In Matthew 28, verse 7, And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. At Pentecost, Peter proclaimed, that he is risen. In Acts 2, verse 32, God has raised Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses. The Apostle Paul preached that he is risen in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 14. We believe that Jesus died and is risen again. He is risen. Hold on to those words and embrace them in your heart. He is risen. Be not ashamed of the gospel. Walk in the truth and the light. And what does that mean for us today? Is our world dark and troubled? Yes, it is. But you know what? On this morning, I don't want to hear it. Because we have a fresh start. The gates of eternity are open. We have been washed clean. We have been lifted up. It's a new chapter. In fact, it's a new covenant in Jesus Christ. He is risen. What does that mean? Is there sorrow? Is there sickness? And is there grief? Is there loneliness? Are people hurting or angry? Yes! And our hearts are with them. Our prayers and even our dedication and our service, our mission, our witness. Yes, that's who we are. We strive to respond to all of those things every day. But today, it's time for the good news because Jesus wipes away all that holds us back and gives us strength to persevere through all circumstances that might weigh us down. Oh, these words are true. The witness, the testimony, and the response of the followers of Christ cannot be explained away. He is risen. They are words of witness. No three words can express the love of God in Christ more succinctly, directly, and powerfully than these. He is risen. And they are words of encouragement when we're troubled, when we falter, when we grieve, when we suffer, there are no words more comforting. He is risen. The, these are words of victory. No sin, no transgression, no darkness, no evil, not even death can delay, derail, defuse, or deny the plans and purposes of our God in Christ Jesus. He is risen. They are words of salvation. Not only is Christ the victor, but as he promised in John 14, because I live, you shall live also. There is no other promise ever spoken, no promise ever heard, no promise ever cherished that better confirms the reconciliation of God with his children than this. He is risen. He is risen on this glorious Easter morning. Oh, preach it, proclaim it, witness it, share it, live it. He is risen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the good news of Easter. And we pray that on this Resurrection Sunday, our hearts would be filled with renewed joy. He is risen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now let us offer together our glad resurrection hymn, He Lives. I see his 
hand of mercy, I hear his voice appear. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to us all. You ask me how I know. So Christian, lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to us all. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Now this is all wonderful. It's terrific good news, but let me share with you another truth, that if the followers of Jesus had not gone forth into Galilee, if they had not experienced the Pentecost in Jerusalem, had they not witnessed, had they not shared, had they not spread the good news, we might not be here this morning. You see, Jesus came that we might live, but he gave you and he gave me the responsibility to share the good news with friends and family and neighbors, not for the sake of church growth, but for the sake of salvation of lives that are renewed, refreshed, and reclaimed. The new covenant promise rests now on our shoulders. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed. May the grace, peace, love, and mercy of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, abide with you this hour and forever. Amen. I forgot to challenge us to wake up the Holy Spirit within us and praise God. I'm so full of Easter joy that I, my memory just doesn't seem to be very good. So let us now wake up the entire neighborhood with the good news that he is risen.